right, good evening. Welcome to the City of Des Moines Plan and Zoning Commission meeting for September 5th. Um, first, I'd like to welcome our new commissioner, Abby. Um, this is actually Abby's second meeting, but I wanted to make sure she came back after her first <laughs> meeting. So welcome back and welcome aboard. At this time, I'll read the rules and procedures. The Plan and Zoning Commission is generally an advisory body to the City Council. The City Council will hold a public hearing and make a final decision on all matters before the Commission other than the site plans and subdivision plats unless denials or conditional approvals are appealed. Please contact the City Clerk or the Community Development Department staff um, for details on Council hearings. Applicants will be given 10 minutes to present their request. Proponents and then opponents from the public are then allowed to speak in that order with each speaker being allowed a maximum of five minutes. The, ac the applicant is then allowed five minutes for rebuttal. The hearing will then be closed and the commission will discuss and vote on the issue. All comments are to be germane to the item under consideration and speakers are to maintain a courteous manner. Items listed in the consent portion of the agenda will not be individually discussed and will be considered for approval in accordance with the recommendation in the staff report unless an individual present or a member of the commission requests that that item be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately under the public hearing agenda. The City of Des Moines is pleased to provide accommodations to individuals or groups with disabilities and encourages participation in city government. Assisted listening devices are available for meetings here in this location. And to better serve you, when possible, please notify the city at least three business days in advance at 283-4209 should special accommodations be required. Plan and Zoning Commission meetings are broadcast on media cable channel 7.1 or 7.2 for customers with that service. Transportation for City of Des Moines meetings can be scheduled to and from DART Central Station at 620 Cherry Street. To reserve your route, please call DART on-call scheduling at 283-8136. Calls for trips will be accepted up until 5 p.m. of the day prior to the meeting. And please be sure to mention in your request that you request transportation for the City of Des Moines meetings at this location. This notice is intended to comply with accessibility requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, so at this time, I note that we do have a quorum. Is there a motion to approve our minutes from our August 15th meeting? So moved. Thank you. All those in favor of approving our August 5th, the Plan and Zoning Commission, the August 15th minutes, please signify by raising your hand. Seven. All right, are there any um, abstentions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. At this time, um, we'll review the consent public hearing items and possibly additional consent. Item number one is a city initiated request to rezone in the vicinity of 150 East County Line Road to amend conditions required by ordinance number 15592. Is there, um, Anyone in the audience who wishes to hear this item tonight? Otherwise, it will be the staff recommendation. All right, seeing none, is there anyone on the commission that wishes to hear this item tonight? All right, that will remain on consent. Item number two is a request from Antonio Martinez for review and approval of the site plan El Paso Auto Sales under design guidelines for vehicle display lots on property located at 1716 Army Post Road to allow reuse of the existing retail commercial site for a vehicle display lot. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes us to pull this from consent? All right, seeing none, is there anyone on the commission that wishes to hear this item? 
passing them, that item will remain on consent. Item number three is request from Nelson Development, 418 East Grand Avenue, for vacation of uh, <clears throat> a project related to a mixed use, a proposed mixed use project, subsurface rights in the north 4,000 feet of East Grand Avenue and the east three feet of East 4th Street adjoining the subject property to allow for footing encroachments and B, air rights in the north three feet of East Grand Avenue and east three foot feet of East 4th Street to allow for balcony encroachments. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes us to pull this item from consent? Seeing none, is there anyone on the commission that wishes to hear this item tonight? All right, this item will remain in consent. Item number four is request from Lutheran Church of Hope, 1821 Ingersoll Avenue for vacation of the east west segment of the alley between Ingersoll Avenue and High Street, adjoining the north side of the subject property to allow the property to be assembled with the applicant's property. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to hear this item tonight? All right, is there anyone on the commission that wishes that to pull this item? Seeing none, item number four remains on consent. Item number five is a request to rezone property located at 2725 Southwest 30th Street. The property is owned by August Home Publishing Company. Um, they wish to amend the Plan, de Plan Des Moines creating our tomorrow to revise existing future land use designation from business park to low density residential and rezone property from M3 limited industrial district to an R181 family residential district to allow development uh, with a single family dwelling. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to hear this item tonight? Seeing none, is there anyone on the commission that wishes us to pull this item? All right, item number five remains on consent. In the public hearing section, uh, it's my understanding that item number eight, which is a request from the village at Gray's Lake for property located at 2500 and 2710 Fleur Drive is in agreement with the items in the staff recommendation. Um, and it, are the property owners here tonight? The, and is that in fact correct that you are in agreement? Okay. But it is my understanding that there might be one consent card that came in. Yes, um, Madam Chair, we had one response card not in favor from an uh, individual uh, at 2832 Fleur Drive. I can put that on the screen if you want to look at that. Um, Let's say you can <clears throat> soon. Go ahead. Okay. And then based on that, you can decide if you need to hear the, hear the item. So, and I guess I should ask, is that individual in the audience tonight who wishes to hear it? So this individual's not here. Commission, what's your pleasure as to move this item to consent? Make a motion to move it to consent. All right. All those in favor of moving item number eight to our consent agenda, please signify by stating or by raising your hand. Were there any abstentions? All right. All right. So item number eight. Um, we'll go to consent agenda. And then it is also my understanding that item number nine, which is a request from River Point West at Gray's Landing um, for the property located at 320 Southwest, Southwest 9th Street and 907 Tuttle Street to allow development of the property for the four story hotel with 98 guest rooms and an associated surface off parking lot is also in agreement with staff recommendations. Yes. Is the property owner here tonight? And is that in fact true? Yes. Right. So with that, um, is there anyone else in the audience that wished to hear that item tonight? Seeing none, is there anyone on the commission? Yeah. 
No, I don't want to hear it. I was going to move consent. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of moving item number nine to consent, please <laughs> signify by raising your hand. All right, thank you. I didn't think everyone, was there any? Yeah, I think everybody raised their hand. So our consent agenda tonight is composed of item number one, item number two, item number three, item number four, item number five, item number eight, and item number nine. Madam Chair, I move the consent agenda. Thank you. All those in favor of the consent uh, items tonight, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you. All right, so for the listening public, the items that we are hearing tonight will be item number six and item number seven. So thank you very much. So if you're not so, here for item six or seven, you're welcome to uh, leave if you want, you can stay. <laughs> Okay, so item number six is a request from Rally Cap Properties for actions on property located at 601 24th Street and 602 23rd Street. And I want to point out that the cards coming around are cards from the original notice for the July 18th hearing, and then also cards from a re-notice of a revised application for tonight's hearing. So it includes a combination of those responses. The subject property uh, is located between 23rd and 24th Street, north of High Street. Uh, a single uh, platted lot and then two additional platted lots on either side of the north-south alley there. Should be noted that this is not a developed portion of the alley, but it is a, it is still considered right-of-way. Um, this was in front of you previously with a uh, project that included a kind of live-work type row house configuration. And uh, since that time, the applicant has adjusted their uh, request to only provide uh, residential use in, in the form of a row house development, uh, abandoning the commercial component. Um, based on that, they changed their future land use uh, amendment to the plan DSM uh, request from a mixed use request to a medium density request. So that part changed and then the proposal of their, <clears throat> what their layout would be changed as well. And I'll, I'll let them a a answer more questions about their actual proposal. Right now this is a, just a considered a rezoning sketch. Uh, Anything that would come back would have to be approved as a site plan. If it comes back under the current ordinance, it would come in front of the Plan and Zoning Commission as a multi-family uh, site plan. So they're proposing a five unit row home here, and then another two units that, that are more, they're rotated to fit the narrowness of the lot, but they would still have garages. They're proposing garages that would access off of High Street um, I'm going to give you a quick look at the, the way these, this area appears currently. So that's looking east down High Street, so your subject property is on your left. There's undeveloped property on the right that's part of the uh, Ingersoll uh, PUD for the salt project. Uh, that would be approved for uh, a multi-family project as well under that PUD as it's currently approved. This is looking west from 23rd Street down High Street. Uh, 
you'll see that it's much narrower before you get to this uh, parcel with an existing home. So uh, this is the property you're looking at, re they're looking at redeveloping here. Uh, initially, the last re request staff was recommending denial based on the commercial component of it. Since that time, they've adjusted that uh, proposal to reconfigure and go with a, uh, strictly the row houses. They are eliminating the parking, but consider proposing garages underneath. Our traffic is not uh, supportive. Traffic engineering is not supportive of having separate drive entrances onto High Street based on a lot of traffic study work that they've been doing in that area. Um, uh, given the parking issues and so forth, uh, they would, it's their preference that that be preserved so it would allow on-street parking on the north side of High Street. Uh, that would push the uh, need for the access to the garages in behind the units and coming off of drives that would come off of 23rd and 24th Street. So um, we don't have a redesign for that because I don't think they're uh, proposing that, but that's the recommendation that traffic is suggesting. So when you look at the staff recommendations on page four and five, um, we don't find that it meets the uh, current uh, designation from the plan DSM of low density residential. Therefore, they are requesting an amendment to go to medium density residential. So in part B, staff is recommending that the future land use designation uh, be modified. Um, and I wanna point out that while this doesn't follow the approved Woodland Heights plan, it is still in furtherance of plan DSM. This is an area that's in a, uh, it's in a commercial uh, node, community commercial node that's superimposed over Ingersoll. Uh, the other thing that the plan DSM seeks to achieve is middle housing development at the fringes of areas in close proximity to transit corridors. Uh, so basically that means walkable distance uh, where individuals wouldn't necessarily have to own a vehicle to uh, live there, they could get access to transit within a walkable distance. Uh, so given that, it does also follow the plan DSM as well. So that's something that the commission needs to take into account. Uh, we do wanna ensure some um, certain development standards for any housing that is built. Even in light of having a review of the site plan, we want certain things to be uh, already uh, conditioned for this rezoning. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning subject to any use of the property limited to uses allowed and limited in the R180 district, duplex residential and row house style residential. And this will also transfer into the housing types that we identify in our proposed zoning ordinance. Three, each, uh, I'm sorry, number two, any non-single family residential upon the property shall be constructed as row house uh, style dwelling units, which are each, which each dwelling unit has a front door or an entry presence facing the public street or streets to the satisfaction of the planning administrator. Uh, it's conceivable end units could have doors facing uh, the side streets as well. And I think, in fact, we'd probably have a preference for that, giving some street presence on the sides as well. Uh, any dwelling unit, uh, each dwelling unit constructed shall have a minimum two car attached garage that is accessed from a driveway from either the existing alley or from 23rd or 24th Street. No drive approach from High Street shall be permitted. So that's based on the traffic engineering's recommendation not to allow separate drive accesses onto High Street. Number four, any dwelling unit constructed shall comply with the following. A, front facade of any dwelling unit must contain one of the following, a front porch of not less than 60 square feet or at least one third of the facade shall be clad with stone or brick masonry. B, windows on any facade facing a public street shall have either the following trim border of not less than four inches width or shutters 
on each side. C, the roof of any dwelling shall be of architectural profile, asphalt type shingles or cedar shakes. Uh, standard three tab shingles would be prohibited. <coughs> any dwelling shall be constructed with a minimum of 1,500 square feet of finished floor area. Okay. Exterior material for any home constructed shall be masonry, cedar, brick or stone, cedar, masonite or cement fiber board. Any dwelling or accessory structure shall be constructed in compliance with all applicable building codes with issuance of all necessary permits by the Permit and Development Center. I passed around the cards. Uh, I will show you. This is an updated uh, consent map from the, er the first hearing on July 18th based on the re-notice. Anybody that was opposed previously is also included on this. Uh, or in favor, so this is a conglomerate of both of the notifications. I think you'll you'll see that a number of individuals responded more than once with their response card. This does not trigger any um, supermajority provision. Are there any questions? Okay. Eric, um, can you refresh my memory? The PUD across the street of High there, I think they had a site plan approved that had some row house type or some, maybe not row house, but some kind of little building along there. They, they have a PUD conceptual plan conceptual that plan. shows that as, a, a, I believe, three story multi multifamily units. Um, there's they're somewhat in a row fashion, but not all of them would necessarily be directly access to the street. But it's an apartment building yeah. that looks like row houses. Yeah, they they gave access, it access vehicular access from the back side yeah, or would, high side. Yeah, it had gr uh, garage accesses from the south side coming in off. Thanks. Off the street. It had row of parking along the north edge, and there were entrances that went into the back side of the building and entrances that so came I thought. off the street. Okay, and, Thank and you. my understanding, based on the uh, amount of units that were put in the project that's in place right now, they would still be able to provide another 23 units. So. Any timeline on that or no timeline? There's nothing submitted at this time. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Eric? All right, seeing none, is the applicant present? Take a step forward. You can just step right on top of it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Got some copies here too. Uh, one for every two, so I have to share. Thank you, um, Commissioner, member of the Commission. My name is Ryan Francois with Rally Cat Properties. Uh, I live at 2723 High Street, uh, a few blocks west of this site, and owner of Rally Cat Properties. So, Rally Cat Properties is a boutique real estate development firm. We were founded in 2015, and since then, have restored homes and revitalized communities in the near downtown area. Our specialty and our focus over those four years has been single family housing. Um, these are some examples of our portfolio. Uh, a lot of these projects are uh, focused on the Woodland Heights, north of Grand and Drake neighborhoods, uh, specializing in the rehabilitation of late Victorian and early craftsmen uh, single family housing. So we've done a lot of work in the immediate area um, and have focused on redevelopment work. Uh, we're turning our eyes to mixing some infill development as well. Um, this would be our first ground up new construction project. Um, we've since closed on the lots here at 601 24th and 602 23rd Street. So uh, another aerial of this site, uh, again, we're on the north side of High Street between 23rd and 24th, uh, just a block north of Ingersoll Avenue and a close up here as well. So. This site, uh, it is two parcels, three lots of record. Um, it's just under a half acre of ground. So uh, 18,692 is our square footage for the site. And again, we are proposing a medium density residential um, based on feedback from neighbors over the last uh, couple months. Uh, I have some other street views provided here. I think Eric covered that. So you have kind of a, a sense of what the land currently looks like. And our goal with the project is to provide a missing middle housing development that would help transition housing from the high density PUD 
at the Roar site into the single family residential in Woodland Heights. Um, we initially looked at uh, attached live work units to allow for a home occupation um, and small business. We've since taken that out of the proposal, as Eric mentioned, to provide uh, medium density residential only. Again, this is a copy of our site plan. And some of the things of note here, as Eric mentioned, there is a pretty steep topography from High Street up to Ingersoll, I believe is over 20 feet of elevation. Um, so the site rises pretty rapidly to the north. Uh, there's also a very dense wooded area on the northwest portion of this parcel that we would like to uh, maintain. A lot of old growth oaks and other established trees in there that we'd like to maintain as kind of a backyard space for these units. Um, so they would have decks and windows overlooking that space. Uh, we, we do not feel that it's feasible or possible to allow parking from that side. Um, the alley stops about 50 or 60 feet north of this parcel and with the topography and very dense veg vegetation, there's really no vehicular access from there. Um, there's also no continuance of the alley down to High Street, which is why we're proposing driveway access from High. Um, so the current proposal is for five units on the western portion, the deeper uh, double lot, and then two units on the eastern portion. They would have two car garages. Uh, the, the western portion would be tandem um, to allow for kind of a stoop and entry for pedestrian access, as well as a single car door uh, with a tandem garage to meet the parking requirements on site. Uh, here's a couple renderings of the project. This would be as seen from 24th Street coming north. Uh, you see the sole apartment building in the foreground. Uh, there's also a small multifamily residential building that's uh, ahead and on the left. The brick structure there, I believe, is four units. So these would be three stories. The first story would feature a tuck under tandem garage and stoop with pedestrian access. Uh, second and third floor would be living space for the residents. Here's another rendering uh, looking west on High Street. Again, we haven't um, finalized our architectural plans, but it would be a mix of siding materials with a gable front facade um, to ease that transition into the more traditional single family housing in the area. Uh, with saw also some modern elements. And here are some precedent projects that we've looked at. Uh, a lot of these would be maybe a little boxier and more modern than we'd look to do in this site, but um, similar in terms of the specs. The units that we're proposing are 1,600 square feet approximately, a mix of two and three bedroom units with two bathrooms each. They, the intent of the project is for single family for sale housing. And I do have in the packet, too, just for reference, the site plan and concept drawing from the ROARS uh, proposal that would be immediately south of this if that moved forward as planned. That would be the final two pages. So appreciate your time tonight. Uh, happy to take any questions that you may have at this point. I have a question, please. Sure. Um, <clears throat> let me understand your proposal is to not have access, vehicular access, to the property from the alley in the, in the rear, is that correct? Correct. Um, and instead of doing that, you propose to have an entrance to each of the garages from, um, from the street, is that correct too? Correct. Um, here we have um, the recommendation from the staff, number three, that says each dwelling unit constructed shall have minimum two-car attached garages, which you've shown, um, accessed from a driveway from either the existing alley or from 23rd to 24th Street. No drive approach from High Street shall be permitted. Uh, how do you respond to that? Given the topography of the site, I don't think it's possible to have access from the north. Um, the alleyway, it's, it, it is accessed. Um, it's a gravel alley that's accessed for, I think, three or four residential houses further to the north. Um, but there's a pretty sharp drop off and a lot of very dense wooded area. Um, the alley pretty much ends, like I said, maybe 50 feet north of here. So I, I don't think it's feasible to have vehicular traffic, especially, especially for a project of this density from that access. Um, I also don't know that it makes sense to have access from 23rd or 24th um, 
may, maybe for the end units it might be feasible, but certainly not the middle units on this site. So. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? I, I should note as well that one of the, the things that we've met with neighbors over the last couple months, um, there is an issue of parking in this area, uh, mainly due to the Aurora's development and the density that that, that, that has brought. Um, but one of the concerns that neighbors have as well, and, and myself as a neighbor, is calming the traffic through this site. Um, there is a lot of vehicular traffic that kind of speeds through here as they go further west, and people that maybe bypass the Ingersoll traffic. Um, so I, I feel, and I feel that neighbors would agree as well, that driveways and a more residential feeling in this section of high would help to calm that traffic rather than have um, a mass of parking and kind of speeding cars through there. It would help calm and bring that traffic down to a more manageable level. So. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty nervous about um, sort of overruling the parking or the, the traffic study. Um, and I guess it sounds like you're saying that this project would be infeasible with the parking off high. Um, that's so it's I, I guess I'm just trying to clarify that 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 you're saying it's it's not doable with number three. Um, rather than it just would be more difficult. Be more difficult. I, I don't think that two cars per, for seven units on this site, two cars per, un, per residential unit, all access from the alleyway to the north is possible. So uh, between the two, we're providing the two cars per unit, but with driveways from high. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I think under the parking standards, Eric, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. They're required to have a minimum of one garage or one off-street parking space per dwelling unit. Is that correct? For row six. Or per zoning code. Yes, so this was an zone. additional. This was an additional or enhanced condition. Yes. To to because be, because of the parking concerns, we wanted to make sure there was additional parking. Okay. And. Eric, could you correct me? So in the staff report under item number, uh, it's, it's section two, Roman numeral two, paragraph three, it talks about traffic and access. And that's where our city traffic and transportation department has, has expressed their concerns regarding the design and that there should not be, uh, they have concerns about the proposed vehicular access and multiple driveways along High Street. So. Um, Again, we're relaying the concerns of our traffic and transportation department, their review of the plans. And so just looking at the orientation of the lots, if, if they can't accommodate that, uh, that request to have those driveways, it appears those lots were originally configured to have units facing the side streets based on the lot configurations. So um, that would be the other option, would be develop it as, as zoned today with single family units on each, each lot facing the side streets. Thanks. Ryan, um, yeah. I love the stuff you guys do. I think you know that. I appreciate you coming down here. Um, I struggle specifically with this image. Okay. And, and the reason I struggle with that is it's, there's not much about that for me that is sort of a pedestrian front. Mm -hmm. um, flush face doors. No idea of where I can put my front chair and such, and mm -hmm. the big two-car garage doors. I mean, I struggle with that, and and, and and my guess is you've kind of went round and round with this design a few times. I, I know the mm -hmm. way you guys work. Um, I, I for me that's tough. I, I I I really appreciate what traffic and transportation does, but for me it's actually more about just all the repeated curb cuts and because so, I actually don't think more cars slows down cars I think people slow down cars yeah. so I'd rather figure out a way to introduce more people along that street not more cars and more curb cuts sure I can appreciate and respect the big grade going up the back and like Mike said you know there probably were I don't know the history of the site but there probably were homes or planned for homes that single-family homes that went right and left I actually think this product type makes a lot of sense here. That's why I was asking questions about the south side, and I appreciate you 
putting this mm -hmm. image in here because I actually think kind of flanking three-story buildings or whatever makes a ton of sense on High Street. I, I thoroughly am in favor of that and what you call the middle missing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the solution lies in figuring out how to get the cars on the back. I really do. I don't know what that answer is, whether it's less units, different units. I think your rotation of the buildings is part of the answer. Um, thinning them up and maybe you acquire that chunk of alley or maybe you already have that north south piece and I, yeah I don't, I don't sorry i don't play too much designer here but i think this is challenging no problem i appreciate the feedback on that i should know it it wasn't our our goal to have uh garages all along high at the beginning we did have a some earlier renderings of a more pedestrian friendly uh facade with stoops and only pedestrian access from that uh, the solution to meet on-site requirements essentially was to use the eastern portion of this lot as on-grade parking, um, which also is not a preference. So uh, the garages was based on the last meeting we had with neighbors. Um, the, one of the goals is really to provide the on-site parking. And so uh, the tandem garage was kind of a compromise to allow for both pedestrian and vehicular access from high. Uh, I know that the staff recommendation was to include more of a stoop approach and that's something that we'll look at really closely in further architectural renderings uh, the concept that we provided is kind of a, a first brush at the architecture of the site but um, I do appreciate the feedback on that no other questions for mr. Francois then we will see if there is anyone in the audience who um, wishes to speak in favor of the applicant's proposal. Yeah, and then there's an extra. Seeing none, is there anyone who wants to express a concern or is opposed to the project? Please step forward. If everybody could sign in either before or after they speak on the end of the table over here where Ryan's signing in. Okay. Hi, my name is Kim Callahan. I'm a resident um, on High Street, just up the hill at 2701. Uh, so my concerns also are with traffic and parking. We've already had a lot of impact in our neighborhood with the 165 units from the Seoul apartment. Um, we had a lot of problems over the winter with snow clearance and the parking that caused problems because snow wasn't getting cleared, because cars weren't getting moved. So the density of this project in terms of the traffic and parking is a concern with most of the neighbors that are here and most of the neighbors that I've talked to. Um, I really like what Ryan does in the neighborhood and I, I second all of the, the feedback on that, but I think there are some concerns on the council that are valid and the traffic and parking to take away that parking from High Street on the north side to give it to the unit only to cause more traffic issues coming in and out. It just does not make any sense. So. I would request that you listen to traffic and parking. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Lila Dozier and I've been living in Woodland Heights for 40 years and I've been before this board many times. It's not just our character plan that this doesn't comply with. As you can see in front of you, it doesn't comply with the 2020 comprehensive plan or the 2040 comprehensive plan. It's 2040 is N5 and um, R160. Now, there was, uh, when I moved to Woodland Heights, there was a house that they took down that faced 23rd. They took that down, it was a derelict property. They took that down, I think it was to the year 2000. Facing 24th Street, there was a house facing 24th Street, and that was already taken down. Um, and always, of course, the um, organization itself and what I've been working with for over 40 years is to replace infill housing. I am proud to say that I am living in, I think, the best neighborhood in the city of Des Moines. And maybe you do not have it on your move to Des Moines and raise a family site, but it should be. It's very, very historical. This, of course, where 
2301 Seoul Apartments is, was the trolley station. That went in in 1901. Our sales brochure for Woodland Heights said, Personal and Porter, lots for sale. Lots of trees, you can have a garden. Um, beautiful area. Um, and it worked in 1907 and it still works. A lot of our new professionals moving into the area um, is close to their work, um, but they can have a garden and a dog. And maybe they lived close before, you know, downtown, but now they're ready for a house to raise their family. Our principal in Woodland Heights has always been, and it's worked for us, and with your approval and Polk County's approval and the city of Des Moines approval, was to infill with single family homes. When I moved into the area and we applied then for our neighborhood revitalization in 91, it stated then, single family homes for sale. They thought we'd never be able to sell them. They sold like pancakes. 32 lots, 32 in this small area, thanks to urban renewal. 32 vacant lots, we've already infilled over 40 infill homes in such a character manner that people who come to visit cannot tell that they're infill. They think they're original. We got that good a job. When Bill Knapp, the two, worked with Regency to put in the first 32 homes, he said, Lila, we're not gonna be making any money, but you need these. That was 40 years after they were taken down. I hope the city is looking and remembering history because if you're gonna take down a house, you better have a plan to put another one back in. Because when they started taking them down in the late 50s and early 60s, it took us 40 years to find a Bill Knapp the two that would work with us. Now, when we met with CZB, we got a glorious notation in their report, which I'm sure you all read. How did we do that? Single family homes on infill lots. They came to us and said, how did you go from distressed to stable? Single family homes on infill lots. Families live on High Street. Families with kids. And the traffic and parking is so bad that people have told me on High Street, I got to sell. It's not safe. When they say there's parking problems, let me tell you, every night, almost every night, 60 cars, 60, parked clear from 22nd to 25th. And they, it might be a good tavern. Teddy Maroon says, I'm doing quite a business, and so is Boss Steakhouse, but there's no parking. So we are their parking lot. That is not our character. We are better than that. I would like to show you. I don't know how this Just thing. Stick it on the yeah. I don't know how it operates. What? You just set it on top of that drawing right there. Yes. <coughs> there you go. That's our 2013 plan, and like Eric said, yeah, that doesn't meet the Woodland Heights plan. It doesn't fit your comprehensive plan either. This is the smaller 1,400 square foot bungalow, Craftsman. And I don't know, you can't really see. That's the Mankey Mansion on High Street, 2707 High Street. It was on the National Register before we even got our historic district. And High Street is a historic district. Helen Young, right there, lives in this Mankey Mansion built by the original Fred Hubble. I would put a lot of these houses on High Street if they were in Ingersoll Park or south of Grand or Waterbury Circle. These are grand houses, single family homes. But we were distressed in 91. 
it was bad. This kind of density we have throughout our neighborhood. We were developed before there was a zoning code. And yes, on every single, High Street is not a corridor. It's not even a collector street, it's eight blocks long. But at every corridor coming into our neighborhood, we have Four Seasons, we have um, on both Woodland and High and 22nd Street, we have a large apartment buildings on every entrance to our neighborhood. We are already dense, but we have a wonderful pocket of the most affordable, beautiful homes you can imagine, and they're worth pre preserving. They're right to the west and to the east of this. And let me tell you, I am not an architectural genius, but I fell in love with the neighborhood and the people. This was my third house. I, bought, I did, redid a house in Urbandale, redid a house in Clive, made so much money, I bought the one that I live in in Woodland Heights. I was gonna flip it. That was 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. I love this neighborhood. It is the best kept secret, but it's not anymore. Every, so day, every day I get a card in the mail. We want your house. This density, is we cannot, ha I imagine 60 cars night after night. It's like Drake relays. Wait till the weekend, it's worse. They park at the bump outs. They illegal park, bar, park uh, blocking the fire hydrant. We've got semis, semi delivery trucks going up and down High Street. I know, I'm not mad at you. You approved the PUD. The reason they haven't completed the PUD is there's no place to park. We appreciate this makes it worse. Got some other speakers. Did this you have makes like it one final thought? Please do not change your comprehensive plan. We've relied on it. It gave people comfort and security to buy a risky house on High Street. They put thousands of dollars into their house using the NFC, and they've got investment in this neighborhood. Please stick to your comprehensive plan. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry I'm so emotional, but it's the greatest neighborhood I've ever lived in. We need you all around Des Moines. I'm Kelly Adair, and I live at the corner of 24th and High Street. This will be Caddy Corner for me. Um, I just wanted to bring up some points that have already been made. Lila made a number of excellent points. We have parking issues currently. We have a density that is too high already. We have semis coming down our streets. This plan is not in keeping with our neighborhood's character. And although Ryan's done a great job with his other work within our neighborhood and we're grateful for that. Um, this doesn't really seem to suit our neighborhood. What suits our neighborhood would be three single family homes. Along with this piece of property would better suit that also. So I'm asking that you um, oppose a zoning change and we keep it as it currently is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Leanne Stubbs. Um, I moved to Des Moines a little over 20 years ago um, from Berkeley, and I was looking around California. all over the metro, and where I ended up was Woodland Heights, um, 2611 High. And um, I am delighted to be part of Woodland Heights. I love, I, I, if I could like underline, underscore everything Lila said about the neighborhood, it's just, it's fabulous. Um, throughout the years, I have, I've been invested, um, invested money. Um, I'm a pastor, I'm poor, <laughs> but I've invested money um, and recently did a um, $100,000 uh, kitchen renovation, kitchen bath renovation. Um, I'm invested in this neighborhood because it is a neighborhood. <laughs> the neighborhood has been changed. Um, 
with, with the PUD. And, um, and again, I'll, I'll echo what Kelly said. I, I don't blame anybody for that. But um, the traffic is, is amazing. Um, today I was driving from, you know, from church to Gateway on, on Ingersoll, and there was another accident at about 12.45 on uh, 24th and Ingersoll because traffic is just out of control. Parking is out of control. Um, I guess I'm begging you to, <laughs> to keep Woodland Heights a neighborhood, um, a neighborhood that we are so proud of, a neighborhood that we are all continuing to invest in, um, a neighborhood that is a gem um, in, a, in our city. And, um, and I'd, I'd, I guess I'm asking that, um, that you don't revise the, um, the single family dwelling designation. Can I ask my pastor a question? Pastor Leanne, did they widen the street when they did the sewer project and put in the new concrete on High Street? A bit. Hi. Hi. <laughs> a bit. Okay. Um, it, which is just, it's now this beautiful speedway. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, she was. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Gwen Key, and I'm a 50-year resident of Woodland Heights. I also enjoy the neighborhood, the surroundings, and I also want you to know my husband and I, we moved to Des Moines to help my parents. My husband worked for HUD, and we were trying to find a house, but my parents wanted us to move into their home. He was seven foot tall. And believe it or not, to find a bungalow that he could go down the basement steps was exciting. I have to mention that I also have enjoyed having the houses in our neighborhood restored. Uh, I happen to be an educator. Um, uh, I retired from King Elementary School, but I also want to say that um, the pictures that were shown um, were distorted. I, I would agree. I, I would like to ask each one of you to come over in our neighborhood. You've heard what we've had to say about the traffic. But if you saw across the street from Noah's Ark, when most of, most of you know about Noah's Ark, you would see an apartment houses, an apartment house dwelling, which all of the people in the dwellings are not parked underneath the dwelling, they're all parked on the street. And the reason why I said the pictures that were shown were distorted, they must have been taken when the apartment dwelling wasn't finished because you're seeing nothing but trees. But you need to see how far that apartment from Ingersoll goes back and see all the cars that are going down the street and to see where Ryan wants to do his dwelling. You can see there's not much room for what he wants to do. We've appreciated him with his restoring the houses, but uh, we, I, I reject this project that he's trying to do, and I would like to see that uh, the single family houses continue, the R160, and uh, since 1991, we've had single family houses, and I'd like to see it stay the same. But I would like for you all to come see what we're talking about. You can hear it. But when you see it for yourself, it makes a difference. Come down there one evening. You know, come around there anytime, and you'll see all the houses. Uh, you'll see all the, the parking up and down high, as well as going along the sides of the dwelling. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? All right, Mr. Francois, this is an opportunity for you to maybe come back and address some of the concerns that have been raised, if you so choose. Uh, yeah, thank you to all the neighbors who have come out and spoken tonight. Uh, 
definitely appreciate the feedback on that, and it's been an interesting process getting to know people better through this uh, proposal. Um, definitely appreciate, I, I live in the neighborhood myself, as I mentioned, and all of the things that they uh, spoke about the neighborhood. I can't speak highly enough about it. Um, I work in the industry trying to sell houses in this neighborhood and others nearby to modern buyers. And I think one of the things that I've learned is there is a huge demand for people who would like to live here um, but don't have the skill set to buy an older house and make the investments necessary to bring that up to modern code and modern livability. Um, we've based a business around that for four years now and have never had any trouble selling the homes when complete. Um, so I think there's a huge demand for younger buyers who do live downtown, would like to be in a neighborhood area, um, but don't have the hundreds of thousands of dollars it can take to buy an old home and fix it up. Um, that's why I feel like this is a, a marketable option and something that's not that far out of line with what's currently in the neighborhood. Um, in terms of the density, I believe on this site with three single family lots under R160, we could do duplexes on each, I believe, uh, for six units. We're proposing one additional unit uh, to make our pro forma work. Um, and if you look at a lot of the neighborhood nodes, uh, I don't have my full slides up here, but um, the neighborhood nodes that are on 23rd and 24th in Woodland, for example, um, just northwest of here, in a very similar sized area, there are seven existing homes um, that were purpose built from the day these were platted. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions at this point. I, I recognize and understand the concerns over traffic and parking uh, with the Roars development. I, I really can't uh, per, you know, control that with our development um, other than meet the on-site parking requirements for what we're proposing to add to the neighborhood. So thanks again for your time. Eric, could you confirm R160 doesn't allow duplexes currently, correct? Uh, <clears throat> no, not. I think he was speaking to the density, just the density itself, but R160 wouldn't allow new duplexes. If they were duplexes in 96, they're permitted, but not uh, new duplexes. So only single family is allowed under the current zoning? Uh, under the R160, correct. I apologize, it's my mistake. Any other questions? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I'll close the public hearing. Commission, what's your pleasure? Well, I have a question for Mike on this traffic study and the driveways. How many driveways would be acceptable? I don't know if we have that number. Uh, their preference was that they would come from the north. Um, and I know we have had a lot of concerns and expressed to our traffic department about parking and on street um, traffic in the area. They've been monitoring it quite a bit. Um, and uh, I know we've done some enhanced enforcement on the parking violations that have been occurring along the bump outs that were added by Roars. Um, so again, I. At this point, I don't know that our traffic department offered a, a, um, a reasonable number or an acceptable number. Uh, the lots historically were oriented towards the side streets, so I think that would be their preference for driveway access to either come off those side streets or the, or the alley and behind the properties. So um, I, I can't give you any other information tonight on what they would accept. And I'm not asking for you to commit. I'm just suggesting that if we look west, and on the um, south side of the street, there are a whole lot of driveways poking into uh, High Street um, a lot. And I wondered uh, why this had to be an exception in that circumstance. I hear the traffic and transportation thing, but I thought, as usual, I'm looking for some kind of compromise here because I think everybody would like to see something built uh, the question is what the compromise is, and if you built single-family homes, uh, how many you could build in the same area uh, following the infill suggestion, and which of those would be allowed to have a drive on High Street if, for example, there were two with drives on 23rd and 24th Street. That's why I asked the question, looking for compromise. I think the difference on the west, I agree there are driveways, but they're mainly single car wide driveways and they're going to detached garages in the rear yards because the lots are deeper. 
And so from a character standpoint, I think of, as what Greg was talking about, um, the double car on the very front of the house is, is a character question. And then it's just the question of historically how the access on the rest of the block is. So um, uh, obviously these, these were previously accessed from side streets and they're trying to maintain some of that consistency even though there are driveways to the <coughs> west and the east. I've got the communication from traffic if you want me to put it on the overhead. <coughs> I'll zoom in on it. Um, you might answer the one question about uh, drive, how many driveways are permitted. TNT, uh, which is traffic and transportation, has received many concerns from this neighborhood about vehicle speeds on on, tar on street parking along High Street. It is my opinion that the developer should make every effort to orient the garage access on the north side of the row homes. One, the driveway number and design will need to meet current city code requirements, which is referencing a spacing on driveways for commercial sites, uh, single family and uh, two family detached are not treated the same way with driveway accesses on the same property, uh, but commercial sites, which are multifamily three and more, would have uh, limitations on the spacing of the driveway, so I think that's what he's referencing. Number two, the neighborhood already has concerns about saw related on street parking encroaching into the lower density areas, removing on street parking along north side of High Street may exasperate these existing concerns. And then number three, if the driveways are allowed on on street and on street parking is removed, the developer will likely be asked to bring forward a design that includes traffic calming elements that slow High Street traffic, likely shifting the curb eight inches to 10 inches to the south along with moving storm sewer intakes. So there might be some expense to <laughs> getting something that would traffic could support. Eric, is it eight inches or eight feet? Eight feet to 10 feet to the south. Did I say inches? I mm -hmm. apologize. So I have a question. That doesn't say you can't have a driveway on High Street. It does not. It's recommending that every effort be made to not. Right, and then I wonder before the repavement if there were any curb cuts for old driveways that existed in this block um there's one there was one uh, for the north south alley would be the probably the most there would have been the homes that were there previously had access to the side streets so there were no driveways uh before you repaved the street and did the giant storm sewer? no yeah. they went sideways yeah well <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, I think that uh, in the public hearing there were several points I think that were well, well um, made, expressed, and also rang true at least to me. Um, the fact of, uh, of altering the, the comprehensive plan and how well that has worked in terms of the neighborhood's revitalization uh, rings true to me. Um, we've heard several people that have talked about the investments that they've made um, in the neighborhood and because of the security and the insurance they felt because the city had taken a stand uh, in terms of what the neighborhood should, should look like. Um, and, and that, I think, is, um, is an important uh, quality to remember. The, <clears throat> the parking is another, is another matter as well. Um, the design of the building uh, and it's set back or not set back from the, st from the street is yet another issue. Uh, so although there, the plan that has come before us is well intended, I think it has so many different faults uh, that we would be remiss if we actually went forward and approved this. So I would move that the, um, that the commission accept part A of the staff recommendation, finding the plan as presented not in conformance with the plan DSM, but then to uh, find part B, no, that uh, the commission recommend that the zoning be, be changed, but, uh, but remain as it is today. 
in part C. For part B. So deny the land use plan amendment? Yes. And I think that would then deny the zoning. Part okay. C. Right. Do you really still want a vote on the rezoning? I didn't hear. Pardon me? I didn't hear. You're correct, but at the same time, in terms of um, there's still due process owed to the applicant for the rezoning. And so we will still have to have council go through the process of um, considering the rezoning. And so there still needs to be a vote by this commission on that and a recommendation to the council on item C as well. Well, then I'd so add. So I, I heard you to say that <clears throat> you wanted to vote no, part D, part B, deny, and C, correct? correct? And you're saying? That's fine. So that's a recommendation to the council, correct? If the vote whatever is. Whatever, whatever is the outcome of the motion, right? So any questions about the motion? So motion. as I recall on zoning matters, we are advisory to the city council. You recall correctly? Yes. yes. Just saying. So I, I have a right. question. If I separate for a minute the site plan and the buildings we've been looking at just for a minute, and we just talk about rezoning. Um, Mike or Eric, in an R3, what is what is the max they could build in terms of number of units or density or so the medium density correlates to the R3 zoning district. Uh, R3 would require also a minimum lot area per unit of 2,500 square feet. So it's basically on a 10,000 square foot lot, you could have four four units. So he's maxing out the number of units based on that. Provision. Oh, so, so he could have eight, but they're doing seven. Is that what you're saying? Um, I think he would. I don't. Four I each. When we calculated it, would he was maxing it out with seven? Oh, okay. Yeah. So hypothetically, and I know you get a motion on the floor, but if there was a flavor to be okay with the rezoning to go to R three, but not this plan, that that is another route, right? Because we're not approving the plan, correct? If we approved rezoning, is that right? So I understand the process. The site plan would be separate review. Right. If it's, it's under the current ordinance in that time frame, it would come in front of the commission for approval as a multifamily uh, design design guideline review of the site plan. Uh, it's conceivable under our projected ordinance if it came through under that, that it would be could be administrative. Review. So, based on the site area of eighteen thousand. 692 square feet divide that by 2500 it's 7.4 units yeah so, so he, he can't we don't get to round up on those at all yeah, so he can't get seven to an eighth unit max. without getting board of adjustment relief then at that point so going back to the motion um as has been stated if this motion is successful this my eric if it's successful the recommendation goes to the council and some of the points that Greg has have raised, would that be considered at that time? So the council would hear it, yes. Um, be, if the commission were to approve this motion, it would trigger a supermajority to approve the zoning. If they recommended denial. As staff had recommended yes. it. Well, as, no, I, I was saying as the, as the motion was. So as staff recommends, mm -hmm we're recommending approval with conditions and they could right. certainly consider different conditions in that process. Mm -hmm. But it would take a super majority vote if this commission recommends denial. Yes, of the yes. Okay. So again, I guess my original. You were my, confusing me because you said staff and staff isn't what the motion was. So. Right. Okay. But I guess my question is the points that Greg is raising about the current zoning. Yes. If this motion is successful for denying it, and then I understand what you're saying, that it goes to the council, it would take a supermajority to overrule it. But what about the points that have been raised about the existing zoning at that time? Well, the conditions could be accepted and would run with the land, and maybe that's a question for Glenna. And then there would be a correlating zoning in our pr projected zoning ordinance mm -hmm. that would be, um, if and when, right? Isn't that the 
I guess I'm not thinking that far ahead. I'm just thinking. So, so, so there would be an action. Greg's comment is about the proposed R3 zoning, right. not the existing zoning on the property. Okay. So all the comments will be included in the in the letter that goes to council for okay. this recommendation. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. I thought you so, were talking about the future zoning no, I, of the projected. After I said that, I could see why you thought that. All right. So, are there any questions about the motion? Just to review, the motion is to um, approve Part A, which is that the request for rezoning to R3 is not in conformance with the plan Des Moines. Um, but for Part B, to deny the land use designation. Um, from re or to revise to deny revising it from low density to um, medium density, and then also the same for Part C to deny approval rezoning from R3 with the following with the conditions that the staff has listed. So, is that the true meaning of your motion? Well, I just want to make sure. That's my understanding. Okay. So. All those in favor of this motion, please signify by stating. Can we do A, B, and C separately? We can. Okay. Please. Yes, sir. I, I will have the motion the way I made the motion. That would be nice. All right. So all those in favor of the motion, please signify by Wait, just a minute. You can vote individually. Um, I am happy to check your rules if I need to, but I do believe that the chair um, of this commission can make determinations on procedural matters. So if you'd like me to go check the rules, I can, but I do think it's ultimately up to the chair to make that determination. All right. So the request has been from a uh, commission member to separate out the motions, um, part A, B, and C, I'm assuming to vote individually on these the person who has made the motion would prefer to keep them intact however considering the fact that that may not change the outcome it might be okay to separate it out it may not change the outcome of the i think the intent of your motion oh Let's, I'll leave the motion the way it is and we'll take it from there. That's the way you're asking me, Jackie. Okay. Then I guess we'll vote on them all three together. And I assume that if you want to abstain because you wanted to vote individually, you could. I think that we're really complicating the situation by not voting on these individually. If, if I could urge you to vote individually, the motion is made for approval of A, denial of B, Denial of C. Okay. Take a vote on on each of those individually, if you could. That would make right. it much easier to present this to the city council. But the, I think the point of having it intact is that if there's a point that you agree with in the current motion, that you would not vote for the motion. But I'll we'll go ahead and vote individually, and so we'll move Part A. All those in favor of Part A. Um, the current motion is to agree with the staff recommendation that it is not in conformance with Plan Des Moines. All those in favor of that? Yes. Okay. Easy one. 11 zero. Okay. Part B uh, is to deny the staff recommendation to revise um, from low density to medium density. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by raising your hand. Can you please raise your hand? Thank you. This is Cora. If you could raise, if you four could raise your hands again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then. No. 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 This was the motion that denied the staff recommendation. So obviously it was not successful. 
You need to ask who is opposed. Who is opposed? To the motion. Okay. Who is opposed? All those opposed to that motion, please signify by raising your hand. That's opposed to B. To B. So that motion was not successful. Motion uh, for, or the motion for part C was for approval of rezoning to deny the approval of rezoning from R3 to um, with the following, with the conditions as staff is listed. So all of those in favor of the motion to deny um, the approval of rezoning to R3. It is our people is to confused. Deny the part this is wasn't, wasn't that part yes. of your original motion? This is where you're B hand and C. Deny C. Deny staff. This is denying the staff proposal to. Correct? Correct. Okay. So once again, all those in favor of the current motion to deny R3. approval rezoning to R3. All right, then are those in favor of the staff recommendation to? Is another motion. Opposed to the motion. Yeah, opposed all those to opposed to the motion, which would be the staff recommendation to rezone, right? Could I get a clarification? Yeah, wait a minute. My, my, my understanding is that after this fails, there's likely to be another motion. Correct. And so my understanding is we're just, we're, we're, we're not approving the whole staff here if we vote no on this. You're only voting on the motion that's right. on the table. Right. However, I think isn't the confusion. The motion is to deny rezoning to R3. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by raising your hand. You already did that. My original motion. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Will's original motion. Yes. So, so Right down here. So, bike right here. You need to raise your hands, please. Okay. Oh, I get so. Okay, so we have four. At that. Okay. So, all those in favor. No, no you just all those to opposed yeah. to the motion. Please signify by raising your hand. Hi. I got it. Okay. So parts B and C, the original motion failed. So are, is there a um, new motion? I'll move the staff recommendation um, as it's written. For B and C. For B and, For B and C. C. We've yes. already done A. Right, sorry. Mm -hmm. And that one passed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the motion now is moving approval of staff recommendation for parts B and C. Um, can I offer a friendly sure. amendment? Thanks. So under part C number three is where staff is suggesting a two car attached garage. Um, not sure how to how to phrase a rewording here, but for me, this is where some latitude would be given, especially if that can be tied to keeping the parking on the street. I think that's common. In the, I live in a neighbor. I live in Beaverdale. I live in a neighborhood like this, um, so I think that's where some latitude could be, just to get driveways off the street and other things that they got to overcome and solve that maybe. We, <coughs> I think the market may dictate wanting two car garages, but that's a different sales thing. Would you entertain revising number three to say minimum one car attached garage with parking along High Street maintained or something like that? Is He's that asking you, David, as, make, as the motion maker. Right. So I, I yes. Um, so what you're saying is rewrite that as one car attached garage 
um, but keep the no drive approach from High Street shall be permitted. And maintain parallel parking along the north side of High. I think that's the key. So you, yes. en you envision owners or occupants would have one car on the street, they one get car out there in some kind of If garage. they get out there before the other guys. <laughs> yeah, right, the other uh, 60. I don't know how you control you, Sometimes you can control the signage, but. So a minimum one car off street per unit. Yes. And then maintain on street parking on the north side of the street. That doesn't mean it's assigned right. to this development. Right. Yep. Yeah, I'll accept that. Thank you. That's interesting. If there was a, a statement about it being attached, is that is that accurate? Or is that not part of the friendly amendment? That it's an attached garage or not? I don't think it needs to be. Okay. Unless you do. I just think it need to have one garage. With Attached makes one sense. space per unit. Yeah, however they want. To do. So, Greg, when you say maintain parking, are you saying as is now with no curb cuts? I think that needs to get developed in the site plan design, but I just think there needs to be a row of parking along there, and maybe there's one. Right. So we'll see this again on site planning if it passes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Greg, can you repeat your amendment again? because I think you changed something. Um, Mike, I like the language you just said, the, the minimum one on-site parking per unit. While also maintaining parallel parking along the north side of High Street. Okay. South side, uh, right. North, oh, no, I'm sorry, north side, north side right. yeah, of High Street. Yep. Yep. Um, and I would probably go as far as to uh, embellish that a little bit and say maximum one curb cut on High Street in case they choose to use that old alley, but not seven curb cuts. And you would accept it? Accept All right, so Jack, could you? Before we go, can I ask a question on the PUD? To the south? To the south. Yes. There's, I can't remember. But is there still vacant space behind the apartment leading up to High Street? Your, your pictures are current. We were told they were distorted. I, 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 I want to know what's there. See this area right here? Right. Jack Ryan. Yeah, right. So that's currently developed as some parking. Ryan's got it. But would be. Eric, redeveloped for units. It's, it's not one. The Jack. parking lot is shown on there. Yeah. It's head in parking. That site has bollards and curbs that prevent parking in that area right now because that's where the building is going Jack. in the future. Do you have this one? Right. Is that in? And the building might act, actually eat up some of this, right? This, this road. It's not a good site plan. It's just going to So I, I thought I heard discussion earlier that this, is, this piece isn't built yet. No. Yeah the, yeah, the housing is not. There are no curb cuts to High Street? No, and it has an inset parking for parking to be allowed on the south side of High Street as well. Right. I match it. Okay. And I can show, the, that's in place already. Right. You can see in the picture. So there's people parking in this. And it was, it's middle of the day, so that's probably an explanation for <laughs> why it wasn't as busy as some of their uh, testimony. Planners are out in the middle of the day when the light's good, traffic's low. So Eric, we made them sod the area where the building, or yeah, seed had, the area yeah. where the building is going to go yeah. and maintain it for that future building site. All right, so the motion on the floor for parts B and C are to approve staff recommendation with the amendments to item number three under part C that we have minimum one on-site parking per, per, per unit. Me, per unit. Yeah. Can't read my own writing here. Um, maximum curb, curb per, uh, Greg, again, was that maximum curb per unit? One curb cut Probably period, unit. I think, is what I heard. Okay. Yeah. And. Oh, sorry. Not one curb cut per unit. No, one curb cut, period. Period, period. 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 Okay, right. sorry, I'm so not I hearing well tonight. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the parallel to the north. 
So all those in favor. Well, could I ask a question, please? Mm -hmm. um, so there's the, the the motion is to have one curb cut for all of the row house, for all of the units, each having one attached garage. No, there would be one garage per unit provided. They might be accessing off side streets. Of okay. To clarify, yeah. the motion was one parking space off street per unit with on-street parking maintained along the north side of high street and one curb cut allowed on the north side of high street was the motion that was made per my notes is that gives, correct that gives them three options will to get parking into the back I, yeah i understand that now yeah thanks so thank you um, i have a question of eric will this will the motion as it stands relieve traffic and transportation's concerns i can't speak to that um they'll be able to review that they'll be reviewing any site plan that gets developed um they they indicated their preference was for access into parking in, not off of high street would if this motion passed then would that be a zoning board of adjustment if transportation came back with questions no, I think if they wanted to appeal something that was required by traffic and transportation, that would be a site plan appeal that this that yeah, the yeah, plan and zoning commission would review. Thank you. All right. Once again, the motion is parts B, C, and the amendments as have just been stated. All those in favor of this motion, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed? Opposed? Mm -hmm. Does it add up? No, there it is. Three. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, um, neighbors, for attending. We are moving on now to site or item number seven. This is a request from Fireworks Company LLC to rezone property located at 1820 East Army Post Road. <laughs> Can Maybe we wait a few minutes. Tell the neighbors to go to this city council meeting. Oh yeah. Oh, the hey, um, neighborhood. Is you can go to the city council meeting. Oh, yep. Yep. Good, Kim. Mm -hmm. Good to see you all. Thanks, sir. We'll be there. And now moving on to fireworks. Yes. Um, <laughs> item number seven, uh, Madam Chair, Iowa Fireworks Company, LLC. Uh, this request is for a property you might be a little familiar with from recent past. Uh, this is the property on East Army Post Road. Uh, next, there's storage to the west. Uh, I think for many years, this was a, a nightclub of some fashion. And the most recent rezoning that was approved involved a fence contractor that wanted to occupy the building so it was given a very limited m1 designation that allowed c2 uses and even some of those were prohibited uh, but also the allowance for a fence contractor to occupy the space that never came to fruition so it has sat there the building is resold uh, the current owner has a buyer uh, who is the applicant looking at uh, occupying it with a fireworks uh, retail which is only allowed in our M1 or M2 districts uh, and then they, they would also be uh, asking for warehouse during periods when it's not retail uh, so the, and it's limited to this property it does have some other there's some other parking on adjoining property associated with it but I want to be clear that the property under uh, review for rezoning is the gold uh, boundary here on the map uh, you can see the condition of the building. It, it could definitely use some work. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm moving towards the east, and then this is back again from the west. You can see those storage units do project out in front. Um, the thing 
uh, to understand here is because it's a asking for a M1 or M2 zoning only um, to allow the fireworks, it requires a plan DSM amendment to uh, industrial designation, whereas right now it's business park designation. Um, business park uh, would be more consistent uh, with a plan business park under our current ordinance. Um, I believe in our future ordinance, the proposed um, zoning districts analogous to that future land use designation are considered EX districts and have a higher uh, standard in terms of the building standards for the building types in those districts. So um, it would be, it's intended to be more similar to like what you see around the airport uh, than the business parks around there. Um, so they are asking for the industrial designation. Um, it would translate into the I-1 if they were approved uh, under the future zoning ordinance. Staff is concerned about the plan DSM amendment going to an industrial designation. Um, so from that standpoint alone, <clears throat> we're not in favor of the request to amend the future land use and thus we're recommending denial of the zoning uh, request. Uh, there is in the staff report it says should the rezoning be denied the applicant would have up to one year to seek a use variance uh, from the zoning board of adjustment to allow use of the property for the specific commercial purpose that they're um, asking for. Um, and then it indicates it would not require an amendment to the plan DSM. So Eric just to clarify if they're denied zoning and we adopt the new zoning ordinance, they don't still have up to a year to seek a use for instance, is that correct? Or Glenna, could you, could you clarify that? So the projected zoning would be EX. So I don't know if they'd have to seek rezoning again under the new ordinance first or? That's a new one. <laughs> it sure is a new one, but um, I, I think because they've gone through the process now, we would treat them under the current code, Either. meaning they would have the ability they to would seek have the, the one experience. Year. Okay, yes. thank you. I don't have any further points to really make other than um, it's really based on the modification in this area. I should note, I, while I didn't get a written communication from Easter Lake neighborhood area, I did take a phone conversation with Jim Ballard, the chair, and he has indicated they attended the neighborhood meeting and at this point they're indifferent. His only concern that he raised was their ability to meet the fire codes and building codes given its building's proximity to uh, adjoining property. So um, he says if they can meet those requirements then um, the neighborhood doesn't have a, a real concern in this situation. Okay, so we're ready for the applicant. I have just a quick question. Um, how long was this vacant before? Uh, I'm going to say it over five years it's been vacant. Um, it's had a couple of owners ships in that time with a lot of false starts, so to speak. And I don't know if there was illegal occupancies happening, but we haven't recognized any occupancy since it was a nightclub. So. Sir, if you'd like to come forward now, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner and members of the Commission for allowing me a few minutes of your time. The property that he had, uh, uh, Mr. Lundy has pulled up, 1820 East Army Post Road. Currently it is zoned M1. Uh, I understand it, it currently is zoned light industrial, limited to fencing. I believe the property across the street, the farm and home store is also zoned M1 without the restriction. I, I don't believe it's restricted, but they have some conditions, but I don't okay. think it's as limited as But it's that. also zoned uh, M1. Uh, so the proposal before the board and the, and the, the council suggests the zoning from the current limitation of light industrial to limited fencing to light industrial limited fireworks to be in accordance with the zoning requirements for uh, retail fireworks set in the city, city code and the zoning ordinance. I did conduct a neighborhood meeting at the property on Friday, August 30th to take in community input. 
as well as hold a pre-application meeting with the City of Des Moines staff on Tuesday, June 18th to discuss the property. I do understand that there has been a number of false starts on the property. Uh, many of the community members are concerned about the, the uh, certainly the facade of the building that has been removed. Um, and they would like, I mean, there's, there's uh, needs a little TLC. And so uh, that, the overall proposal, so my, my understanding is that city staff has recommended that the property not be rezoned industrial because industrial usage for the property isn't in line with the creating our tomorrow plan. Um, on, my, on, on me reviewing the planning and zoning definition, so my understanding the new zoning to take effect puts the property in the EX district that you had mentioned. Uh, the definition provided by the City of Des Moines for the EX district is EX is intended for locations and corridors with a mix of light industrial and heavier commercial uses. Again, the property is, is currently uh, M1. And I certainly understand, I respect the, the intent of the city that an industrial use for this part of town is, is, is a concern uh, for the city. However, that is why I have requested a limited usage specifically to fireworks, uh, which truly is not an industrial business in nature, but rather a commercial one. Uh, Iowa Fireworks Company, we are a local fireworks retailer. Again, the true nature of the business is retail. Um, there would not be industrial activity, again, because the city code limits the activity for a parcel or a property in the section 134, 1281. You can only have a single use if you're using the property for fireworks, correct, Mr. Lundy? So That's the way it's written, and I believe that yep. transfers to the yeah. new code. Mm -hmm. So the, so uh, there would, there would, because fireworks would only be the allowed usage, that wouldn't allow any other industrial activity on the property. Uh, so appro on approval um, of this very limited use for the property, uh, we would work with city staff to bring the uh, storage building that's currently on the property and site up to code compliance. We have engaged GTG architects to do the, the code review, address um, any specific items with, with the building. And as, as rough as the appearance looks, it, it does it's, it is structurally sound, but there's a number of things that need to be done to the building to bring it up to today's standards. Not limited to addressing the uh, septic system, which we're fully aware of. It uh, needs to be sprinklerized, fully aware of. So I think that we've done some due diligence to understand what it is that we'd be undertaking to make use of the, the property, um, down to having uh, expertise related to the, to the fire uh, requirements, additional firewalls, given the proximity to storage mart um, with their storage shed and it's next to that. So, uh, so on, on, on approval of that, um, we, would be, we would be looking to uh, use the property. We would submit a site plan and a, a, for approval to the city, but zoning is really that first step so that we would be allowed to use the, the property for seasonal retail sales in the summer uh, defined by state code from June 13th through July 8th in accordance with the state law. And then when it's not, not in season, the purpose of the building would be to store the various tents and supplies and yes, some fireworks that we would have left over from around the state. From our, our We have approximately 40 other locations and communities across the state. Um, we would like to, I, I live in, reside in Urbandale, 4732 72nd Street, would like to really invest in the Des Moines area, specifically this area uh, that has room for improvement and uh, keep, keep the dollars local for those, that investment. Questions? Greg, I think you just alluded to it. Um, so does your company put on shows? We are a uh, consumer retail fireworks business, so we don't have, uh, there's, there's two levels of fireworks. One is uh, 1.3G, which is the ATF regulated uh, fireworks that are, that are put on uh, for a community show. For example, you have to have an ATF license for that. We deal in consumer grade fireworks, some of which the city of Des Moines does not allow, uh, some of which the, the small item city of Des Moines does allow. The, um, uh, we, communities across the state have a variety of rules surrounding that and we always uh, encourage citizens to be following the rules and, and there's a lot of people that live out in the country that can use the, the products that come visit us as well. So, so you're we, selling year round in uh, different we do, places? Uh, we only sell in the state allowed time frame of, of June 13th through July 8th. Uh, we're based in Iowa, so. 
Okay. Yeah, Iowa doesn't allow sales year round. So you referenced the property across the street. Yes. I assume that's because they're already selling fireworks, correct? Uh, they were previously, and I believe they came before the board, and it was a, a multiple use for a single property, and I believe that was denied. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Is that, is that correct? That was the board of adjustment. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Seeing none. Because it appears that there's going to be anyone to either oppose or support. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I've reached out to, I know that they um, talked to Mr. Ballard, the neighborhood representative. I met with him in person as well as the surrounding uh, property owners. Uh, some of them came to the meeting. Some of them I, I discussed over phone or, or email. Um, seems like their main thing is they want to make sure that the improve the property because I think it's a, a eyesore for the neighborhood and I think that this while it is I, I understand that with the industrial aspect to how the city's defined where you can retail fireworks I understand that that is not um, I think the limited usage is appropriate that that uh, I wouldn't expect an unlimited industrial designation for this property I, I agree with you agree with you on that so I'm seeking a very limited for fireworks retail use for the property so okay any other questions all right seeing then i'll close the public hearing and thank you commission what is your pleasure i'll move staff thank you all those in favor of staff um, can i make a comment yeah um, i i guess i would encourage i get why staff doesn't want to change the zoning but i it doesn't seem like it doesn't make sense to let him go ahead and i'm glad staff has shown that he can go to the board of adjustment and I go through that process and still come out okay right so to clarify the so staff rec is approval of a denial of b denial of c if you want to take separate votes you can do that or you can vote as a block no, it's i'm the good doing it all at once yeah. <laughs> all right all those in favor of staff recommendations a b and c please signify by raising your hand all those opposed all right and um so eric you're going to explain what we just said about yes. what his next um so up so this will go on to the city council where it will require six seven vote to approve as requested uh, if the city council were to deny it on their first reading he could file for uh, zoning board of addressment relief for a use variance at that point in time. that's the year right i'm sorry oh, yeah, I have one year to yeah he point. would have one year mm -hmm. a one year window to be able to do that correct okay thank you and i think Glenn have verified that that's still under our current all right thank you and thank you for coming this concludes our um, public hearing for tonight mike are there any additional items just wanted to confirm that monday night the council's scheduled to have their public hearing on the proposed zoning ordinance a so that we is scheduled to have public hearing and first reading uh the meeting starts at 4 30 the public hearing starts at 5 um so we're expecting uh, a fairly good turnout and comment at that meeting and um, we are asking the council uh, the recommendation from staff is to approve first consideration of the ordinance there have been a number of revisions that are proposed to the ordinance um, and those are available on the city's website if you go to the um, city council webpage, the council agenda is there and there's documents there or you can go to the plan bsm website and and look up those documents as well so thank you very much all right any commission reports seeing that meeting adjourned thank you everyone